Hey guys, Chris here, Toman YouTube channel. I have the one and only and awesome, my favorite Scotsman. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Colin Scott uh, here on the channel. Hi. Thanks for joining me, man. Thank you very much. And uh, it's, um, there, there's a specific reason why I have Colin on the show, because I know he's extremely knowledgeable and uh, a wise dude for his age. I must say. Um, he knows a lot about um, all the um, you know, electronics and all the, um, the science behind noises, really. And uh, if you haven't checked out his channel, which is called CS Guitars, exactly, uh, you will learn a lot and you will not fall asleep. And that is not easy to achieve. And uh, dude, I raise my head. Thank you very much. Uh, it's it's crazy. I love, I love, I love all the videos. Uh, so uh, make sure to check out Colin's channel. And now, the question, the the question: How should I connect my cab to my head? It's a big question, and a yeah. lot of people ask it. And there's a heck of a lot of confusion yeah. about what's. Uh, capable of doing what's safe to do yeah, and, yeah. Um, and, what, and what the proper procedure is. Because obviously there's like, you know, your, your easiest way, your cab has like eight ohms and you see an eight ohm out on your head and you just plug it in and it sounds right. So that's, that's safe, that's easy. That's the simplest yeah. thing to do. Yeah, but then. But then the there's a lot more starts. complexity. Yeah, yeah. So what's all about it? What, what is ohms? What is resistance? What is serial? What is parallel? There are so many words. Let's let's go with the the ohms first. Okay. I think that's probably the biggest question people have yeah, because they yeah. see they see this number and this funny little symbol yeah. and they they go what what is that what does that mean? Nobody yeah. really is too sure. So one thing that you said there is resistance and while we usually associate the ohm symbol with resistance, yeah. In the case of speakers, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Okay. Uh, speakers aren't simple resistors. Uh, they actually they don't resist. The impede and in okay. physics those are two very different things. Oh, okay. Impedance, which is what a speaker is measured in, has a resistance element which okay. is the magnitude part, the part that we can measure and that's why we have a ah. number on there. So it's a resistive part of the whole impedance and we can put that number on the back of the amplifier. Okay. And say that's, that's just to categorize it, just to yeah. know what we're talking about but it's not really the, but it's not the main the thing. The full picture oh, okay. because on top of just the resistance you also have a phase element okay. um, to speakers, and that comes in with inductance and capacitance. Okay. Because okay. inside a speaker, you have a coil of wire, yeah. um, and when you send a signal through that coil, it induces a magnetic field, yeah. and there's a big magnet on the back of the speaker. And since that coil sits in the presence of the magnetic field, they, it starts to move yeah. when, it, when it generates its own. And when you've got that movement attached to a big piece of paper on the cone, it pushes a lot of air, air. Into, yeah. the, uh, into the room. So impedance is a much more complicated thing than purely the resistance. The resistance yeah. And um, it's very important because and resistance is a static value. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't change so much. And uh, impedance does. Okay. Your impedance of your speaker and your amplifier uh, change with frequency. They're frequency dependent. So depending on what your <sighs> guitar signal is doing, what notes it's playing, and depending on... Uh, how the ampl amplifier is reacting yeah. and the way it's amplifying yeah. And, yeah. and sag and all that sort of stuff in the transformers, it will then show the impedance differently to the speaker and the speaker will then see a changing impedance and it will change its, its impedance in response. And that's where you get that valve amplifier feel thing from. When people talk all about right. the feel and the response of an amplifier, it comes from this impedance interaction between uh, the, trans the output transform on the amplifier, if you're running a valve amplifier, yeah. and, the, and speaker the speaker itself. itself. Okay. Yeah. So that's why it's also very important to get a, a reactive load attenuator if you wish to attenuate your, pow yes. your two power amp signal. Yeah, you can get otherwise you lose this, this you interaction. Get, you get to interact, yes. You can, ah, you can okay. have two types of attenuation. You can have uh, re you know, resistive uh, attenuators and you can have reactive uh, load yeah. boxes. And your res resistive loads are purely just a big resistor that can handle yeah. the power. Yeah. But you don't, because that's static, you don't get that push-pull sort of because nature of the change the in, in impedance? Mm. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. change you the impedance. Need, yeah, you, you need, need that, something cha that, that changing reacting impedance. And that's where a reactive load. load comes from when you come to attenuators. So cool. So cool. Okay, mm -hmm. let me grab the amp. Yeah, we have fantastic. the uh, rev dynamos here. There we go. So, you have a couple of options on most amps. First of all, 4, 8, and 16. These are the numbers you will see on mm. all of these amps. Some only have 4 and 8, like something like a, 
like a Mesa doesn't really have a 16 ohm or not all of them have yep. and Marshalls and British amps are very often 16 ohm 16 right ohms, yes yeah. so eight is like a, a nice, uh, nice nice metal ground exactly uh, I think a lot but, of people might be using eight ohm cabinets yeah, yeah I yeah, certainly yeah. am yeah so why do we have 116 28 and 24 here this comes down to your output transformer again and this really only um, counts for valve amplifiers. Solid state amplifiers don't have an output transformer. They don't require one because they okay. are low impedance devices by nature. The very okay. design of them means they're low impedance. So they can interface with a speaker without this other element mm -hmm. to do the communication. Okay. But valve amplifiers, the output of the valves is high impedance and it needs a transformer to step the impedance down so okay. that it can re respond to the speaker and that's where you again get that interaction from. Yeah, yeah. So all these outputs essentially are different tappings on the coil of the transformer. Oh. So your, your, okay. your, your transformer will have a full coil of wire that will be your 16 ohms total and then halfway through that winding that coil they'll have broken it out, put a wire no and way. then joined it back up and kept winding. <laughs> so that's, okay. that's how you can get, you know, you, you can have one transformer that can do 4 ohms, you yeah. wind it up to 4 and then you wind it up to 8 and then you wind up to 16 and you've got yeah, those three yeah. wires coming out mm. and then you can okay. tap them off like this. So that's why it's not a good idea to plug in different kind of cabs. Yeah, you're, 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 the mismatching can be a real problem, especially with valve amplifiers. Solid state amplifiers are a bit more lenient towards it. Yeah. Um, for example, solid state amplifiers can run perfectly safely without a cabinet attached. You can operate the amp oh, without wow. the cabinet okay. because, it's n because of the way they're designed, it's yeah. not an issue. Yeah. However, for valve amplifiers, it's a real serious danger. Yeah, yeah. And the reason that it's a real serious danger is because without the speaker showing a That's impedance back mm -hmm. to the amplifier, the transformer and output valve see that as an infinite impedance. It's, oh. it, it sees it as this is massive. Yeah. And yeah. what it will try to do is match its impedance to <laughs> This missing cabinet. So it overloads itself. Basically. Yeah, yeah. As, and as, as impedance rises, voltage rises. Yeah. And I shouldn't have to tell anyone that, like, a, a voltage that is attempting to put itself to infinity is not is not going <laughs> to result in an amplifier that survives very long. <laughs> yeah. 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 So wow. Uh, so okay. you know, it's it's one of the reasons why you you certainly want to make sure a valve amplifier is operating with um, a load at appropriate load attached, and you match it as best possible because if you're putting your 16 ohm load into the 4 ohm tap. Okay. The amplifier is not seeing what it expects to see, okay. or, or vice versa. So you want to make sure that you're so matching it. If, if you will can. your sound change as well? Like you, you, you're using a 16 ohm cab in an 8 or in a 4 ohm um, output. There, there will be a, a difference in the performance. Uh, okay. Because the the impedance comes down to voltages and currents. And if the speaker is not seeing the correct voltage and currents it expects, okay. it's either working too hard, too hard or, or not enough. Or so you're either so, yeah. so you're you're either and, and you're either getting less performance from the speaker and the an amplifier than you should because the yeah. amplifier's not pushing the power that it yeah. wants to, and that obviously means there's power somewhere else not getting dissipated, which is putting strain on good? components. Yeah. Or you're just not just not getting the performance out of the speaker that you okay. that you should okay. be getting. So the, this idea of what is a safe mismatch, there's not a safe mismatch. Yeah. Just match the impedance yeah, yeah. and uh, it's sure better it for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, second thing, we have two, let's stick to 8 ohms because 8 mm. ohms is, is your, your uh, safest um, um, yeah, output. So you have two 8 ohms. Yes. Why do we have two 8 ohms? Can I plug in my two 8 ohm cabs? This is, this is the one confusing thing about amplifiers is that you would think Logically, that if you have two 8 ohm connections or two 4 ohm connections, like you see on this yeah, amplifier yeah. here, that you could just plug in two 8 ohm cabinets to the two 8 ohm connections and you'd be fine. Mm -hmm. And that's a very no. bad idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this comes down to series wiring and parallel wiring. And this can be done both at the amplifier level and within the speaker cabinets itself. Yeah. If you've got a speaker cabinet with more than one speaker, uh, you've got potential of wiring the speakers in these two different ways. And similarly, the way these outputs are wired can be either wired series or parallel. Most usually parallel in these okay. cases. And that's why, oh come on, to, I've got visual aids. Oh, okay. Wow. Colin is prepared. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> so that, that's your first important Im uh, oh, info there. Yeah. That in many cases, if you have two um, same outs, it will be parallel. But yeah. not always, and you always have to make sure 
it's what you think it is. It's a, a situation, it's a situation a of issue. read the manual, <laughs> right? The manual. You'd read yeah. the manual, find out what, what your amplifier is doing. Don't yeah. just assume that you can plug anything in anywhere. Yeah. You need to know for certain. Otherwise, yeah. it's a very costly repair. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we'll move on to the ideas what's behind series in parallel because I got a lot of questions, um, people asking, you know, what, what are these things that are a bit confusing. So my first visual aid here is a series wiring diagram. And um, what series is, you can think of it as one after the other. Yeah. So yeah. what we have here on the diagram is your signal's coming into one speaker and then it will feed out of that speaker into the next. Yeah. And that's, this is kind of logical. It's yeah. the way we set up our uh, guitar pedals. Yeah. You'll, yeah. you'll go guitar to your tuner, to your overdrive, to your, and it's one after that. That's a series connection, one yeah. after yeah. the other. Now this, um, especially when it's, we're talking about speakers in a cabinet, maybe you've got a 212 or a, or a 412, um, this probably wouldn't be the desired setup um, for the same reasons as the guitar pedals. Yeah, the, too much. The is, one after it yeah. will be affected by the one before it. Yeah. So your signal's going through one speaker, that speaker will obviously push influence it through a coil, the, yeah. influence what the next speaker sees. Yeah. So yeah. not both the speakers aren't getting the same, the same signal. Yeah. Yeah. What we have other than that is uh, parallel. Here we are. And what this essentially is, is um, the one signal comes in and then splits to the two separate speakers yeah, yeah. individually. So what this, the two, each speaker is seeing the exactly exact the same, same signal. signal. So they're both getting said fed the same thing. They might be different speakers, they might sound different, yeah, but at yeah. least they're getting the same thing to start okay, with. Okay. Now, this is probably your preferred arrangement in a speaker cabinet. Yeah. And the parallel wiring is the same as what you will see in the amplifier. Um, these two 8 ohm taps are essentially this point and this point. If okay. I'm pointing at those in the right okay. places. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, so you can imagine your speakers are attached. If you see those three speakers as a speaker cabinet, yeah. so you've got two yeah. cabinets, then it would, at these two arrow points, that would be where it would connect to there. Yeah. And then on the inside of the amp, it commons back to the one eight ohm tap on the transformer. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the crucial bit. Because if we look at the mathematics of, uh, of these things, we'll go, we'll go back to series first, mm. because it's the, it's the easy bit to understand. Back in school. Back in school. This is the first thing that you will learn in um, a high school physics class. Yeah, yeah. Right. This is this this is um, the way to sum or add up resistor values in series and parallel circuits, yeah, yeah. and it works for speaker impedances as well. So in a series, it's very intuitive. Yeah. It's the total is of both. the total of, yeah. of, of both both yeah. speakers together, or, yeah. or however many, many speakers together, yeah. is the resistance of the first one or the impedance of the first one plus of the second, plus of the third, and so on and so on, depending yeah. how many speakers you yeah. have. Yeah. So as an example, if you've got an eight ohm cab, plus another eight ohm cab, uh, that's 16 ohms. Yeah. That's series. Yeah. But parallel is a little bit more, if you're not familiar with mathematics, it might be a little bit scary when you look at this at first. Okay, okay. But um, it's, actually, it's actually very <laughs> simple as well. So <laughs> this one is, um, okay. do you want to see here? It's fractions. It's um, okay. Is it is yeah. it making sense? Yeah, I mean the lowest row. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. So what happens here in this situation is that you have one upon the total, or the reciprocal of the total equals the reciprocal of the first speaker plus of the second plus. Ah, okay. So mm -hmm. it's one divided by the impedance. So when you plug in your numbers here, your two eight ohm cabs, you've got essentially an eighth. Yeah. Plus an eighth equals. Two eighths. Yeah, yeah. And two eighths is a quarter. Yeah. But that's yeah. that's one over the the total. If yeah. If you then yeah. flip the fraction upside down, you get the total. So um, eight over two, that's four. It's four. Eight divided by two yeah. is four. So you've got yeah. four ohm load. So what you can see is in a series system, the two impedances will get bigger. Yeah, yeah. But in a parallel system, the two impedances will become less. They, you actually drop the impedance level. Yeah, yeah. So when you're plugging into here, if you've got an 8 ohm cab and an 8 ohm cab and these two 8 ohm loads, then they will come back together as 4 ohms. Yeah. And that's not right. That's not good because you that's need right. to plug in an 8 you ohm. You need 8 ohm. So yeah. what you yeah. need to do for these two 8 ohm connections is plug into 16 ohm caps, yeah. which it's very confusing when they don't label that directly on the yeah. amplifier. I know yeah. some amplifiers do. I've got yeah. an angle that's got all labeled yeah. out. Or and like Victory does it. Right, like Victory does really it. Yeah, they, they, they want to make sure that you yeah. don't break your amplifiers. Um, and the same with the 4 ohm, the two 4 ohms there. Um, that's where you'd put your two 8 ohm cabs. Yeah. 
So that's, um, that's exactly what's happening here because these two connections for the two fours and the two eights are coming off the one uh, impedance tap on the transformer. Yeah. But that's why we only have one 16 ohm yeah. because there's only one transformer yeah. and it's wound all the way to 16. Exactly. And also no one has um, two 32 ohm caps. It just right? doesn't, it doesn't really just, happen. It doesn't really happen. It doesn't really so happen. it's just enough. Yeah. yeah. So it makes sense to have two of these, two of these. This is going to be your two 16 ohm and this is going to be your two, two 8, 8 ohm, ohm yeah. caps. And that, that, that gives you, with that setup, pretty much any cabinet combination yeah. you want to yeah. have. Yeah. And what if I want to plug in um, 16 ohm here and something somewhere else simultaneously? Probably not a good idea. A good Again, idea, right? because you've only got the one transformer yeah. and these are just tappings of the same yeah. transformer. Yeah. So as, as, as soon as you use this one, yeah, you, it's, you really it's can't bad. use the rest. You don't want to speed it more. more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there you go, guys. Do not combine different ohm caps because it's, it will ruin your amp or your cab or both. Mm -hmm. And also if you want to make sure you can use two caps of the same impedance, mm -hmm. you have to make sure your amp has a series or a parallel um, out for, you know, for those caps. You Find which one it is and, exactly. and make sure you use yeah. the right, yeah. the right exactly. mathematics. Uh, so um, reading forums and people saying that it's going to work is good. It wouldn't be enough for me, you know, just mm -hmm. to make sure you know what you're doing. Just go on the official uh, homepage, write the company, write maybe a, a place, you know, where professionals can tell you what's up or go yeah. to a, a technician and let them measure it because it is oh, easy yeah. to measure. You can, you can physically yeah. measure these yeah. connections yeah. because... With a multimeter. Yeah, yeah. multimeter, you yeah. can measure it and you can find out exactly what's going on yeah. inside. Yeah. Or as you say, contact the manufacturer because they would much rather answer an email that says, what cabinet should I put in? Then answer an email that says, can you please repair my yeah. amplifier? Yeah. I blew or or, or uh, having you know people hating on them because they say they're, your product is not really... Oh yeah, your product's rubbish because yeah. it blew up. But, which you know might happen and it's mm -hmm. not... you know It's not their fault. We, we don't need... Yeah, all right, cool. <laughs> so thanks a lot. Colin. No problem. This Thank was you very pretty much informative. Me. I need an hour and a night to uh, kind of work <laughs> things out Process. and let it settle. So uh, you guys take it easy and uh, have a fantastic week, day, weekend, night, party. <laughs> Cheers. Subscribe and comment and check out Colin's channel. Cheers guys. <laughs>